Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our provider and healer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and for the, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will bless us, and as we come to worship you this morning, please bless each family that is represented here. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. If you're able to stand, I would ask that you would stand all around this great sanctuary. If you'd like to join us at your homes or you're watching us virtually, you can stand. Repeat after me these words. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. This is our call to worship. Verses 26. The Lord has done it. it. It is wonderful in our eyes. The Lord has done it on this day. Let us be joyful and glad in it. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Praise the Lord. Such a wonderful job. You ought to be fired up for worship now. Amen. Come on, somebody give God praise for our young people. Give God praise for allowing you to be in the service one more time. Can we shout out Hosanna on Palm Sunday? Hosanna in the highest. Let us remain standing for our Gloria Patria. Glory means to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for our morning hymn, O Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together if you can. We come to praise the Lord all today.
Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my One more time for the Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on and magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. 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 Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, look at me, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, Blessed be, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, give our rock some praise. Give our Savior some praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, come on, look at your neighbor and say, let us, let us. Exalt his name together. Is there anybody here who knows his name? Is there anybody here on a Palm Sunday who's not afraid to shout that name, to bless that name, to holler that name? It's the name that's above every name. It's at that name that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Can I make Satan mad? What's his name? Shout out that name. What's his name? How many know there's healing in that name? I wish I had some help over here. How many know there's deliverance in that name? How many know there's power in that name? That's why one wrong songwriter said, there is a name. I love to hear. Do I have any witnesses here? I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. Come on, look at the name and say, it's the sweetest name on earth. Anybody go testify the next part? Oh! I wish I had some old folk in here. I didn't say old folk. I said, I wish I had some old folks in here. Oh, how I love Jesus. Can you lift your hands and say, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Now point to yourself because he first loved me. You ought to break out in another praise right there. Yes, Lord. Bless the name. Come on, if you love him, give him a praise to show that you love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. You can have your seat if you want to. If you want to keep on praising him, you got that right. Come on, we came to celebrate today. <laughs> Ain't no quiet church today. We came to celebrate today. Ain't no quiet church today. We came to celebrate today. This is a noisy Sunday. They made noise on Palm Sunday. If you came to be quiet, you could go ahead on out. But I wish I had some saints, some noisy saints in the house. I didn't say some noisy saints. A nosy say, I said some noisy saints who don't mind shouting hallelujah, who don't mind giving God glory and praise. 
For when you think of the goodness of Jesus, anybody thinking right now like me? And all, can I say it again? Some of y'all missed the shout cue. And all, I'm going to give it one more time, the third time to try. And all, he's done for me. My soul. Anybody else got a soul in here? My soul cries out. What does it cry out? Hallelujah. Anybody part of the hallelujah chorus this morning? Anybody part of the hallelujah chorus this morning? Open up your mouth, shout hallelujah. It sounds, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, yes, I said, oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it, oh. Why do you love him? Because he Come on, let's sing that verse again. There is a name I love to hear. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. I love to sing. It's word. It sounds like music. Sweetest name Come on if you love them on earth. Well we're singing Yes oh How I love Jesus Singing Oh How I love Jesus Oh How I love Jesus Because Be Chorus one more time. Come on, give me a double clap if you don't mind. Well, we're singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, because he prays. Love me because he first loved me. Because he first loved me. One more time. Because, because he first loved me. Come on, give him a because he first loved me. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Armani Oliver to come to give our announcements. And after she finishes, we're going to ask for our video announcement for Holy Week. And then we'll ask Sister Ava Barber to come and Give, our, give us our words of welcome on today. Let the church say amen. Good morning. 
with sincere gratitude and the warmest thanks. Thank you, Past Town family, for opening your doors for our Father's homegoing celebration. We are grateful and pray that God will continue to bless you. The family of Deacon James Coleman. Special thanks to deacons, trustees, ushers, and communications team. With a thankful heart to my church family and friends, just sending a great big thank you and love for your continued prayers and support. God is awesome and he continues to bless me. My health journey continues and I'm praising God for each step forward. The small things mean a lot. I've been dearest to get outdoors, but remembering to listen to my body. God bless you. Love, Dana B. Please check with Sister Harris on date and time for the Hallelujah Chorus rehearsal for this week. Sign up for the Sunrise Breakfast is still going on. Please sign up on the sheet in front vestibule. Anyone needing a check today, please see Brother Kevin Brickman. There is a mass choir rehearsal Thursday at 7 p.m. On Saturday, March 30th at 1 p.m., the youth department will host its annual Easter egg hunt. There will be arts and crafts, movies on the real meaning of Easter, and the Easter egg hunt, and light refreshments. We are asking for classic eggs, candy, or monetary gifts to help with what is needed would be greatly appreciated. Please send your children between the ages 5 and 12 for an afternoon of fun. Tickets are now available for Pastor Harris's celebration on Saturday, June 1st, 2024 at 11 a.m. Please see Sister Norma Allen if you wish to take advantage of the payment plan. See any member of Pastor's Aid for tickets. Will members of Pastor's Aid see Satan? The Young Women's Ministry, ages 20 to 49, will meet on Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. We will meet here at the church. We still plan to opening the nursery on Sunday, April 14th. We will continue to accept donations through next Sunday. Thank you, Brother John Monroe and Sister Rache Washington for their donations. <laughs> First Baptist is planning in Ocean City, New Jersey to go to Ocean City, New Jersey on July 20th, 2024. The bus will leave at 8 a.m. and will depart at 6 p.m. The cost is $40 per person and children 12 and under are $25. The First Baptist Church is also planning to go see the play Daniel at Sight and Sound Theater on August 22, 2024 at 11 a.m. The bus will depart at 9.45 a.m. and for 11 a.m. show. The show, after the show, we will go to Miller's Morgan's Board for dinner. The cost is $125 per dollar per adult and $80 per children. The cost tickets include the show, dinner, bus, and driver. The due date for all that payment is July 21st, 2024. Please see Brother Dana Johnson. Valley Township's annual Easter egg hunt is Friday, March 29th, 2024 at 3 p.m. at Rainbow Elementary School. Thank you. Amen. Come on, give her a hand. That was a lot of news this morning. She ran like a champ. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a video announcement at this time. You are invited to join the First Baptist Church of Town for Holy Week. On Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m., we will have a virtual Monday Thursday service that will be broadcast on Town's Facebook page and YouTube channel. The guest preacher for this service will be Reverend Dr. Arthur Carson of Springfield Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks to the very fact that no matter who we are and how we are, our salvation is dependent on the sufficiency of Jesus. He is enough. You don't need to roll on the floor no more. 
On Friday, March 29th, at 6 p.m., we will have seven last words of Jesus Christ's service at Pale Camp. Seven gifted preachers will come and share the good news that came from Good Friday. Preaching for this service will be Pastor Rob Marshall of New Life in Christ Church, Hopesville, Pennsylvania. Are you willing to say like Isaiah did? Send me. Isaiah didn't know the pay rate. He didn't know what the benefits were going to be. He said, send me. Pastor Connie Dutton of Faith Center United Ministries, Hopesville, Pennsylvania. Josh Crane of Providence Church, Hopesville, Pennsylvania. The beauty of the gospel and the beauty of the church is we get to put on display how we're to love one another despite not looking like one another, not having the same background, not having the same culture, right? Pastor Kevin M. Hunt of Trinity United Bible Church, Hopesville, Pennsylvania. Now what does, what does the enemy want you to do? you to forget where you came from. And he wants you to forget how God did it before he can do it again. Pastor Katina Rock, a forward impact life ministry, Hopesville, Pennsylvania. You are the light, oh sister, oh brother. You are a mighty man of power, a mighty woman of power. God wants to use you. You might not can't see it, but God is just waiting for you to trust. Pastor George Smith, Second Baptist Church of Knights, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your future is already set. And Pastor Roland Holmes of First Calvary Church of God in Christ, Hostville, Pennsylvania. What shall we say to this trial? What shall we say? To this depression, if God be for us, who, who can be? Who can be against us? On Saturday, March 30th, at 11 a.m., there will be an Easter egg hunt extravaganza for the children of the church and community. There will be lots of fun and food during this wonderful event. On Sunday, March 31st, which is Resurrection Sunday, Pantown will have its annual sunrise service at 6 a.m., along with its regular morning worship service at 11 a.m. Pastor Michael Clayton Harris will be preaching for both services. Join the Pantown family as we celebrate on Holy Week the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Come on, let's give Deacon Andrews, Sister Tony Barbara a hand for lending their voices to that, that commercial. Give Ava a hand as she comes and welcomes our visitors all today. Reverend Michael Carey and the pulpit associates, Reverend Custer and Reverend Whitehurst, and all the members of Past Town, we welcome you this morning. As it is our cu custom, please stand and give a holy word. Come on, wave at somebody. 
And after you finish waving, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody just glad to be here another day? Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give God a hand. Hallelujah. This song is a familiar song. It says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing that. But I encourage you to celebrate. Hallelujah. Everything that the Lord has done for us.
Some of y'all thought y'all were at the club. I saw you. I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't always been on the gospel channel. I saw some of y'all. Yeah. Saw some folk move. I ain't never seen move. Man. My, my, my. It's amazing what a little groove might do to you. Amen. If you're happy, you know it. Come on, clap your hands this morning. We bless God, and we praise God. Can we thank God for our young people who already splendidly leading us in a wonderful way? We give God glory. We give God praise. I don't know about you, but I get excited about Fourth Sunday. Amen. Just to see our young people. We give God glory and give God praise. I'm not going to be long because I know that some of us are traveling to Port, Port Deposit on today, Port Deposit, Maryland, as we will help celebrate Pastor Steve DeVos' 30th uh, pastoral anniversary. Can we give God praise for that? And he uh, extended us the invitation to come and share, and I'm grateful for that. Those who are, are leaving to go to Port Deposit, if you're on the bus, please make sure that you see either Sister Brown or Brother Bill. Uh, they will be our drivers. Let's thank them for driving today. <laughs> Amen. There is a meal that will be prepared for us in Port Deposit, so uh, we want to make sure that we make our way. Brother Till's going to drive. Okay. <laughs> All right, somebody going to drive. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Long we got two drivers, amen. And it's not Pastor being one of them, amen. <laughs> amen. But thank you, Sister Brown. We'll see whatever happens, but we're going to pray that it's going to be two drivers, not Pastor Harris being one of them, amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to being with them. And if you could be so kind, if you can be so kind, I'm going to ask the ushers, in addition to passing out palms, 
Can you have an extra tray or basket? Because you all know how I go down. I get down. I don't believe in going somewhere else without taking a present. Amen. So we want to be a blessing to them. Also, not only do I want you to think about today, but we're blessed to go Wednesday night to Greater Deliverance Church as I've been asked to preach for the Ministerial Alliance of Coatesville. We want to take a gift to that event as well. So if you don't mind just putting a little extra in the basket as you go, that would be greatly appreciated. And as I'm thinking about it now, everybody who can, lift up your hand real quickly. Lift up your hand. Close your fist. Make a loving fist. Don't think about a person you want to knock out, but, but think about a person you want to give a loving hug to. Open back up your hand again. That's my way of greeting everybody on today. Y'all know I normally stay in the back, shake hands, but today we're going to be too pressed for time. So as soon as I get through preaching and say the benediction, I'm heading to the parsonage so I can get myself ready to head up the road. So uh, do know I'll be back on the back, back next Sunday in the back, willing to shake hands on today. Also, don't leave without getting a palm. Before service is over, we're going to pray over the palms, and then we're going to ask uh, our ushers. And if y'all need some of these young people to help out, feel free to do so. We're going to pass out palms. But we know today is Palm Sunday. And we have officially begun Holy Week. So please make sure that you don't leave without your palm on today. Also, let's keep in mind all that is going on during our Holy Week. Uh, we're going to Greater Deliverance on Wednesday. We're going to have a virtual Monday, Thursday service. We're going to do communion. I think our deacons are going to be stationed here on, on Thursday from what time? Be 12 to 1. So if you need your communion cup, uh, to take communion with us virtually, please come uh, between 12 and 1. Uh, if you can't come, you may want to ask one of the deacons if they'd be so kind to get you while you're here, all right? I don't know your schedule, but try to see if you can pray for one of them to get you a cup today. Amen? Amen. All right, so we're going to do that. And then also on Friday, we're looking forward to having a great time on Good Friday. Last year's service was wonderful. Uh, the community came and showed up. And we want to be here again at 6 o'clock. Now, I'm telling you, if it's like last year, if you come at 620, you might be downstairs. So please get here if you want a good cushion seat. Amen. A good cushion seat. Be here before, somebody said, I'm going to get my south on you, before, before six, before six. Somebody say before, 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 amen, before six. Also, we want to be in prayer for our own Reverend Steve Crutchfield. He's going to be preaching in the seven last word service. And that's going to be taking place at 12 o'clock at Greater Deliverance. I believe he's preaching the fifth word. Am I right about it? Come on, give God praise. So at 12 o'clock, I'm going to be there to support our own Reverend Steve Crutchfield. So if you're able to be there at 12, come on through. It's always good to have some home folk, amen, cheering you on. So nobody else shows up but me and Sister Crutchfield. I know she's going to be there, amen, amen. <laughs> we're going to hold it down for pastime. Preach, rap, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we want to be in prayer for him as he preaches. And then also, please, parents, grandparents, guardians, bring your young people out next Saturday at 1 o'clock. I want to thank those persons who have taken it upon themselves to work with our young people in this season for our, our East Egg Hunt. So please be there. We have some refreshments, games, and all that good stuff at 1 o'clock. And then... Uh, the next day we'll have sunrise service and y'all pray for pastor to be able to get up by 6, amen, to be here to preach early in the morning, amen. Like we're taking literally, he got up early Sunday morning yeah, with all power in his hands. So we want to be here at 6. Also, if you plan on coming, uh, please sign up for the breakfast. Our missionaries are going to be preparing breakfast. Come on, give God praise for the missionaries. <laughs> Under the leadership of Sister Sharon Thompson. And they are ready to serve us. But please, if you know you're coming, please let somebody know so we can put you in the number. And then we'll have our 11 o'clock service. So let's keep that in mind and let us be in prayer. And this is like a season of renewal. Somebody say renewal. 
This is our Super Bowl as Christians. If you can't get charged up for Resurrection Sunday, then something's wrong with you. Somebody say it's Super Bowl time. It's Super Bowl. Super Bowl time. So we want to be fired up. And before Resurrection Sunday, I am fired up because I see Sister Dana Brickus in the house. So we've been praying. Come on, give God praise. We've been praying for her. Come on, can you thank God for answering prayer? Come on, come on, come on. If you've been praying, come on and get some praise in you. Yes, Lord. We bless God. Bless God, and while we're clapping, let's thank God for the Coleman family, Sister Cherie, Brother Dale's in the house. Come on, we're praying for them. Give God praise for them. Amen. Amen. And we thank you all so much for your loving card, plus the generous donation that you all did not have to give to our church, but you all decided to do it anyway. They gave us $500. Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. Thank you so much for your generosity. Amen. Real quickly before we go into prayer, uh, there's a correction. Was, oh, Brother Locke, my bad. Give God praise for Brother Locke from Philadelphia. Come on, come on, come on. We give God praise for Brother Locke in the building. Amen. And let's give God praise for Sister Charlotte, who's visiting, who brought them here. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Brother Locke and Sister Charlotte. Oh, Tiffany. All right. Give God praise for Sister Tiffany. Amen. She's been on our healing list as well. Amen. We might have to have you Sunday every Sunday. Amen. You bring everybody out. Amen. Amen. We're so glad to see you. And Sister Brick is Brother Locke. We are witnessing how prayers are being answered. I'm going to give y'all another chance to get it right. We are witnessing how prayer is being answered. Some of y'all missed it. I'm gonna try it one more time. Because you, you might be on that prayer list one more time. We are witnessing how prayers are being answered. Somebody ought to give God glory. Your praise should be bigger than your plea. Your praise should be bigger than your plea. Hallelujah. Can somebody lift their hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know my God answers prayer. I know my God. Answers prayer. Our praise should always be bigger than our plea. For God inhabits the praises of his people. And we thank God for just witnessing power of prayer. Can I just call an audible for y'all today? Can we just do thank you, Lord? Can we do thank you, Lord? As we prepare for our intercessory prayer, we want to lift up and pray everybody who's on our prayer list. And we see that our praying on Sunday, our praying Monday through Friday through the prayer calls, our praying that we're doing at 6.30. God is answering. Somebody thank God. Thank God. There's power in prayer. We want to lift up those on our prayer list on the social media that will be out on tomorrow as well as the one that's already out this past week. I'm going to ask Deacon Joe Lewis to prepare himself to pray for us today. And let us stand if you have a name that you want to call out as we stand in praise. Come on, lift up that name right now. Call it out. Call it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lift 
lift your hands. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for the healing that we've seen. Thank you, Lord. Any thankful people in the house today? Come on, tell them thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell them thank you. Thank you. right here. I, I just want to thank you, Lord. Been so good. Come on, is everybody a witness? Been so good. Been so good. Come on, tell him. Tell him he's been so good. You've been, been so Anybody, that's anybody's testimony. Come on, lift your voice and hands. Be so good. I just want to sing. I just want to thank. Come on, build it up. You, Lord. Oh, you've been my friend, Lord. Come on. 
come this morning just to say thank you Lord thank you God for how you watched over us all week long you allowed us another chance to stand around this throne of grace and God we ask a special prayer this morning for those that have been on a sick list God thank you for touching their bodies thank you for rocking their frames this morning God and allowing them to make it to the house of prayer and God there are those that may be watching virtually that are still on the sick and shut in list. We ask you to bless them, God. Touch them with your finger of love that one day they might walk through that door and say thank you. And Lord, there are names that have been called this morning that are on the sick and shut in list. God, we ask you to touch them. Hear their petitions, God. I don't know what they need, God, but you know. You do all things well and you never made a mistake. And God, bless those families that are standing in the stead in bereavement this morning. Be with the Coleman family. God, continue to watch over and bless that family. And God, just continue to watch over this church, the First Baptist Church of Pastown, as only you can. And God, we say a special prayer this morning for our pastor that stands on the watch wall. God, build him up where he may be weak. Strengthen him, God. Continue to let him stand and stand on that watch wall and stand up for what's right. God, blessing each and, each, each and every member, one by one and name by name. Whatever they stand in the need of, God, I don't know you, know, but you know, God. Bless this nation. God, bless the United States of America. You see where this is going, God. We've gotten away from what the motto was years ago, and it's on the money that they look at every day. It says, in God we trust. Father, take us back to the position where we can say, in God we trust. Not only as a church family, but as a nation. God, I don't know what's in store for us, God, but you know. There are those standing around this altar this morning, God, that have petitions. We ask that you grant each and every petition, God, if it be your will. Come see about your children this morning, God. Let them know that you'll never believe them or forsake them. Let them know that you'll stand by them, God, through the thick, through the thin, through the storm and the rain. God, let them know whatever their petition is. All they have to do is leave it at the altar. The song said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. 
God, if we leave them at the altar, let us not take them back to our seat. But leave them here at the altar and trust and know that you will do what you said you would do. You will take care of us. God, whatever we fail in asking this morning, there are a lot of things that I don't know that's going on, God, and in somebody's life this morning that may be trouble in mind. mind. so much, Deacon Lewis, for leading us to the throne of grace on today. And as uh, Deacon Lewis was praying, he called out the name and I looked up and I saw somebody whose name he just called sitting on the back seat. Let's thank God for Reverend Teal being here today. Come on. Amen. Amen. We give God glory. Praise for him. We continue to pray for his lovely wife as well. We thank God for allowing us to see Reverend Teal on today. Let us continue on in the spirit of worship. How many of y'all feel good today? Isn't that sweet, sweet spirit? In this place, and, and let me just say this real quickly. Give me about two minutes. I actually came to church with a heavy heart. This was one of the, uh, the worst weeks for me this, uh, this year. Uh, it was a tiresome week. I had to go to a conference today 
also I just had to stay up all night long uh, to pass in my final document for my dissertation. So emotionally it was draining. And mentally it was draining. Then this past week, uh, unfortunately, I got news from, uh, that one of my former youth members at Acts of Faith overdosed on drugs. And he died at the age of 24. And his father is my son in the ministry. And that was a real hit to me. And uh, I had to contemplate some things in my own life through that particular situation. And I don't mind being honest. I realized that I had been negligent in being a father in the ministry. Because even though I had been gone for two years, I had not known that his son was had a drug addiction. And that showed bit more diligent in making sure that I check on my sons in the ministry. Sometimes things like that have to happen for you to have a wake-up call. And I'm thankful that God allowed me to see my error, not to say I could have saved his life, but at least I could have been praying with his father throughout that process. So, uh, that took a two real toll on me and then I found out a young person that I'm very close to, had a huge heart for, she was taken advantage of. And that really hurt my heart. And uh, just very emotionally draining, but that's one of the benefits of coming to the service. Songwriter said, forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. And do what? Worship. And I didn't mention any of that stuff because when the Spirit of the Lord comes in place, God says, I know your heart is heavy, but if you focus on me, I'm going to take care of everything. I'm going to take care of how you're feeling. I'm going to do what you can't do. So just worship me. And know that everything will work together for good. So I thank God for being in the service one more time. Can we thank God for these musicians? They are blessing us on, on today. Listen, let's get ready to raise this uh, offering on today, God. We know the Lord loves what kind of giver? Cheerful giver. This past week, my mother and I represented the church at uh, the Eastern Region of Progressive National Baptist Convention. That's, we're going to change that real quickly. It's in the program. Uh, we're going to raise an offering, missions offering for the Eastern Region uh, to help offset whatever missions expenses that we put in through our church check already. We want to offset some of those costs. So if you don't mind, just put a little extra for our missions. This weekend will go to our uh, efforts with the Eastern Region. Also, while I'm thinking about that, the installation where I'll be installed as president of the Pennsylvania Progressive Baptist will be May 5th, May 5th at 4 o'clock. So just put that in your uh, schedule, if you don't mind, May 5th at 4 o'clock. With that being said, let us prepare to give back to God what God has graciously given to us through tithes and offerings. The way to give found in your program as well as on the screen. We invite those who are worshiping virtually to sow into our church's ministry on today. And while I'm thinking about them, can we thank God for our virtual watchers on today? We give God praise for you on today. We pray that you are being blessed by this service. If you're ready to give, if you're ready to give, cheerfully on this device, whatever you do, just pray to God, don't say, be a cheerful person. So that I may read to you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask our trustees to come bring the table around. Also, we're going to to get place. Our children are going to give us a wonderful offer of election. Come on, give them a hand as they get ready to sing for us. Some of y'all in here, clap your hand as they get ready to the altar. Come on, stand up. If you're even given electronics, still come. Tap your device on the basket you're going to use.
Come on, give God praise for that news headline. Come on. Let's give our young people another hand as we stand. Let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God, for these gifts that have been given for the building, for the camp. Father God, we thank you for the jolly. We thank you for what is taking place. Would you have already shown us how powerful and how great you are, God, and what you will do, and we can and are able to, God. We ask that you would give us continue a reasonable portion of strength, God. Now give us the bread of life. Feed us, God, and let, and let our ears be attentive to hear your word, God, and help us to hear you and not only just hear, God, but be doers. Thank you for the, the money that has been taken for the building and the furnace of your kingdom, God. We pray that it will be a blessing as it goes out to do your purpose and your will. Thank you for all things. It is in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for all the givers, both virtually and in-house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lynn Crutchfield. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you, trustees. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, children's choir, for the selection. Just a couple of things. There's a correction. Mass choir rehearsal will be tomorrow at 7 o'clock, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And uh, Sister Crystal Brown, I got word that you're up for drive because Brother Teal is sick. <laughs> All right. So that's breaking news. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let us uh, prepare our hearts. Amen. Uh, let us prepare our hearts to receive what God has for us through the preaching and teaching of the word after we receive our sermonic hymn from our young people. Can we give them? Oh, I'm sorry. Before that, let me let me not get ahead of myself. Let's do our women's history moment right now. And uh, lending her voice. Hold that tight real quickly. Lending her voice to this. Stop it, please. Amen. Stop it. Lending her voice is Sister Iris Reed. Come on, give God praise for Iris. All right, there you go. It's over because we're missing some sound. Let's stop it. Stop. You probably see the whole presentation without sound. Let's stop it. We're going to pray over it. Let's stop it. It's being choppy. Well, let's try to figure out how, how we got that choppy sound real quickly. Let's try it after service. We're going to, uh, after sermon, rather. Come on, let's sing to the, uh, the young people, and then we'll come back for uh, the sermon. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> If we figure out what the audio is, we can sing, listen to it before I preach.
Come on, give God praise. Come on, Come on give him another hand. That was powerful. Stand on your feet for the word of yeah. God. It's because, yeah. it's because you've been so good to me. Is there any witnesses out right there? It's because, it's because you've been so good to me. Has he been good? Has he been good? Oh, yes. It's because you've been so good to me. If that's your personal testimony, lift your voice and say, it's because, it's because you've been so good to me. One more time, it's because you've been so good. It's because you've been so good to me. Come on, give God some praise. If he's been good, if he's been good, if he's shown up in good, do I have a witness? The reason why I wave my hand, the reason why I shout this morning, the reason why I do my dance, it's because, do I have any it's because witnesses here? It's because, I wish I had a witness here. It's because you've been so good. Do I have anybody on go help me right here? Been good to me. Been good to you and you and you and you and you and you. It's because it's because you begin to shout just right there when you think about all he's done for you. If you think about how you shouldn't be here this morning, but it, it's because you've been so good to a sinner like me, it's because, hallelujah, you've been so good to me. One more time, just say it right here. It's because, it's because you've been so good to me. Come on, make the devil mad. Oh, yes. It's because you've been so good to me. One more time for the Holy Ghost. It's because, it's because you've been so good to me. Come on, give God a hiss because it's been good to me, friends. <laughs> my, my, my. God be praised. God be praised. Those who can stand, will you stand with me as we read the word of God? We read the word of God real quickly. Luke chapter 19. Look at verses 36 to 40, and then I want to turn to Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. It says, And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was drawing near a distant of the mountain, the center of the mountain of Olives, 
The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones will immediately cry out. And then over in Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 and 9, it says, And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees, spread them on the road. Then the multitudes went before, and those who followed cry out, saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The word of God for the people of God can respond by saying thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on today. Let us pray. God, we bless you and thank you for all that has transpired in this worship experience. We thank you, Lord, for how you've allowed our young people to lead us in a splendid way. We thank you, O oh God, for that lyrical reminder we ought to praise you because of so much you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have been rendered, the fellowship that has been felt. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see your healing power at work in this service. And we ask, oh God, now that you will speak through the preaching and teaching of your word. And I pray, God, that where I'm low, lift me up. Where I'm weak, make me strong. Let nothing about me or anything that I may have done get in the way somebody drawing close to you, I pray, God, that you anoint my voice afresh for this experience and give me everything I need that will be helpful for this preaching experience. Spirit of the living God, have your way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Let the church say amen. I'm going to cut across the field a little bit. I was tempted to just say, let's go home. I was tempted, real tempted off that. It's because... You've been so good. Yeah, really, really tempted. And I'm going to stay in that vein real quickly. I just want to preach for a short period of time. This subject, make some noise. Make, make some noise. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, make some noise. Tell them this, neighbor, you don't have a right to be silent. Amen. Make some noise. My brothers and sisters, someone wisely came up with this quote and said, there is a time and place for everything. And maybe, just maybe, the person who originally coined this very familiar phrase was very familiar with it, with what, rather, it says in the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, where it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. In that same chapter in Ecclesiastes, we come to learn that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7, it says there is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And as we look in our text for today, we come to realize that to, on that day called Palm Sunday was not the day to keep silent, but rather it was the day to speak. And we come to know this during Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus, our Savior, our instructor, the one who has all power in heaven and in earth, instructs his disciples that they should make some noise to give him some praise and honor and never allow any substitute to make it for them. We learn from the gospel writer Luke, who was a physician by trade, that the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem happened days before he would later be betrayed by his own disciple Judas, then be crucified by the people of Jerusalem, and finally on the third day be resurrected from the dead with all power in his hands. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is classified as a triumphant one because when he entered into Jerusalem, there was a celebration going on in his honor. 
For this celebration was in keeping with the Old Testament prophecy prophesied by Zechariah, found in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, that says, Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In verses 28 through 35 of Luke chapter 19, Jesus fulfilled this pr prophecy when he had two disciples to go to a village where they would find a colt, yea, a donkey. And once they found it, they would bring it back to Jesus where Jesus told them to tell the owner, the Lord has need of it. And the Lord needed it so that he could make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem to fulfill the prophecy in Zechariah. So in verses 36 and 37, we see as Jesus entered the celebration on the donkey, the multitude was spreading their clothes along the parade route, if you will. Now in Matthew's account of Jesus' triumphal entry in chapter 1, he stated that not only did the people spread their clothes on the road, in which he referred to as garments, but he also noted that others cut branches from the trees and spread the branches on the road. Can I give you a little information before I give you a little inspiration later on in the message? The clothes and branches signify tokens of honor according to Old Testament days. The clothes that were spread represented royalty. Somebody shout out royalty. For only priests, kings, and others of rank wore those type of clothes. Whereas the branches in Old Testament days represented prosperity. Somebody shout out prosperity. The branches which were laid on the road in honor of Jesus is the basis on why today is known as Palm Sunday and why churches hand out palms to the congregants commemorating this particular celebration which represented the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. As Jesus near Jerusalem, verse 37 tells us, the people, in addition to spreading the tokens of honor, also participated in a period of mass worship and praise. The text says the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God, not with a silent voice, but the text says with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. In other words, everybody's soul caught on fire. For everybody had a praise is what I do, spirit. On that day, there was no need for any praise team, any cheerleaders, any coaches telling somebody, you ought to give the Lord some praise. For the people knew just to be in the presence of the Lord was reason why they ought to make some noise. On that day, the people gave Jesus verbal praise by saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. In Matthew's account, he noted that the crowd before saying what Luke wrote began with saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And as we begin to break down the meaning of what rolled off the lips of the crowd, we first begin with Hosanna that Matthew introduced us to. I want somebody to understand Hosanna is not Jesus' name. Some of y'all been rocking to Kirk Franklin saying, what's his name? Hosanna. That's wrong. So Jesus' name is not Hosanna. So if you ever meet Kirk Franklin, say that's not his name. I love the groove, but it's wrong theology. The word Hosanna shouted out by the crowd was originally a Hebrew invocation. A prayer that they would speak to God, which meant, oh, say. How many of y'all ever shouted Hosanna before? How many of y'all needed Jesus to save you? How many of y'all need Jesus to save you right now? Can you open up your mouth and shout Hosanna? Yeah, later Hosanna was used as a cry of joyous acclamation and adoration. The second part of the quote, but the first according to Luke's recollection of this day was a quote which stemmed from Psalm 118, verse 26. This song of praise and thanksgiving was the usual welcome song or greeting for Passover when pilgrims would enter into Jerusalem. 
All but one word of that quote rendered on that day came from Psalm 118, verse 26. The only word that was omitted from Psalm 118, verse 26, that they said on that day was the word king. Somebody say king. king. The people added king because they expected Jesus to be just like his grand, great ancestor David. And be the national leader who would restore Jerusalem back to its former prominence and powerful empire. Because of this notion, the people had the wrong idea about Jesus being the king. They didn't understand that Jesus didn't just come to be king over Jerusalem, but he came with the mission to be the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Thus, when they discovered Jesus did not come to fulfill their hope, by reestablishing Jerusalem's dominance, some of the same people who were on the crowd, who were in the crowd on Palm Sunday, shouting Hosanna. Five days later, crucify him, crucify him. And can I tell you, there are times when people don't meet, or when you don't meet other people's expectations of you. These same people who praise you. Same folk who clapped for you, same folk who even patted you on the back will be the ones who put you down. Will be the same ones start plotting against you and will even stab you in the back. If you didn't say amen, you might be one of these folk I just talked about. So, so this teaches us never get too high about someone being in your corner. Because all that, all the praises, all the adoration can instantly change if you don't do what people expect you to do. Do I have a witness in the house? And as I press forward, the end of the quote rendered by the multitude was peace in heaven. And glory in the highest. This portion of the quote was similar to what the heavenly host sang at the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. The difference between what was rendered by the heavenly host and that of the multitude on Palm Sunday was this. The heavenly host proclaimed peace on earth. But the multitude declared peace in heaven. And these phrases, even though somewhat different, both pointed toward the death of Jesus. For Jesus would bring peace on earth by paying the price for sin and opening all the door, open the door rather, for all the sinners to have peace with God. Jesus would bring peace in heaven by conquering the grave and rising up from the dead and descending into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Thus we see both phrases were appropriate. And as we looked at, at this, even though some of the disciples had the wrong idea about the king and probably didn't understand what they were saying when saying peace in heaven, they all still got their praise on. And as I pause right here, I need to tell you, giving Praise to God is great, but giving praise to God is even better when you know why you're praising him. <laughs> so many, many times people can be found singing or shouting about someone who they really don't know anything about. And then when this happens, this is why some folk who are praising God at one point it fizzles out because their praise is based upon if there's an atmosphere of praise. In other words, if everybody else is praising, then I might as well join in. Some people's praise is like jumping cables used to jumpstart a car. They need to be clamped onto somebody else's praise for their praise to finally jump off. 
Can I tell you when a person knows why they're praising God? Their praise is never at, at, at the mercy of the atmosphere of praise. When, when somebody knows why they're praising God, their praise is never dependent upon somebody else telling them to give God praise. When somebody knows God for themselves, their praise is never resting on the chords of the keyboard or from the beat of the drum. Because when you know why you praise God, you realize praise is what I do. When you know why you praise God, you're like the psalmist in Psalm 113, verse 3, that from the rising of the sun, wish I had some help in here, until the setting down of the same, our God is worthy. I wish I had some folk who knew Bible. He's worthy to be praised. When you know why you're praising God, you're like the psalmist who said in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord. I ain't waiting for nobody else. I will bless the Lord. I'm going to say it one more time. I ain't waiting for you. I ain't waiting for you. I ain't waiting for you because I know what the Lord has done for me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise, did anybody come to pass time with a praise? And his praise, I'm still waiting for some of y'all to come out yourself. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can you open up your mouth if you got a praise? You ought to have a praise because he woke you up this morning. You ought to have a praise because he healed your body. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I get a kick out of some folks. It's amazing what you see up here. Some folk, got to look who's praising. I guess the coast is clear. Hey, man. Your praise should never be based on anybody else's praise. Because you have a praise for yourself. How do I know? You didn't wake yourself up this morning. So, so, we know we ought to make some noise. And we come to realize that uh, everybody's not happy when noise is being made for Jesus. Uh, in verse 39, we see there were some haters in the crowd. And they were religious folk. That, that's why you should never pat yourself on the back just because you come, because you come to church. Because you, you don't, it don't mean you say, you just might be religious. You might just come out of ritual. Some of y'all come because your mom and dad, who's now in the grave, told you to come. Right? But, but we see that some folk who are religious don't get excited when we give some noise to Jesus. The Pharisees were annoyed with the multitude. I'm sure they were like, well, at least they shut up all that noise. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why the Pharisees had issue with the folk making or making all this noise for Jesus, they, they felt praise giving to Jesus was sacrilegious and blasphemous because you got to remember they were or are, were rather a sect of Jews that never believed that Jesus was the Messiah in the first place. And there's some Jews even living today that don't believe that the Messiah has come. They're still waiting for the Messiah to come. Secondly, you know how humans can get. Folk start getting jealous when folks steal your praise. You got to realize they were the big shots in the community. And they, they were used to everybody looking up to them. But then when Jesus came to town, he stole some of their thunder. And some of y'all get a little quiet now because you know you get a little jealous too. 
you were getting all the accolades and you were getting all the praise and then somebody came in and you looking at them all funny, wish they'd gone on somewhere. Some of y'all ain't saying amen because you know I'm telling the truth. But yeah, they, they got jealous toward Jesus, so that's why they didn't want them to make some noise to Jesus. And thirdly, they had a problem with someone coming on the scene challenging their authority. Challenging their power. Who does, I'm going to say Negro because Jesus was black, right? Feet like bronze, hair like wool, sound like a black man to me. Right? That's not just my sermon, but I'm just making a theological claim. Yeah, yeah, so they didn't want this man coming on the scene questioning their authority because they were used to doing whatever they wanted to do. And they, because they were more spiritual than everyone else, they felt like nobody else could check them. And if you read scripture, you will see how Jesus had no problem consistently checking the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's why they spent a lot of time plotting to kill him. So, so we do know the Pharisees then are like some of the Pharisees we have in the church today. We, we got some folk who don't like all this noise. Some of the folk don't like coming on Fourth Sunday to pass time no more. It's too noisy. And there are people who come to God's house who expect you to be like them. The frozen chosen. They want you to be like them. They want you to join them in disrespecting God. By not giving God praise when you come not into your house, but into God's house. Y'all do know God set some house rules for his house. Here's a house rule, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. In other words, you should have had a praise when you walked into the door. You shouldn't be waiting for the call to worship because you should have had worship at home before you got here. Preach for it. That's what I came to do. So, so let me help some of y'all. Instead of letting people make you feel like you're crazy because you give God praise when you come into his house, make them know they're the ones crazy. You, you're crazy looking at me like I'm crazy because while I'm praising, at least I'm following his rules. You're the one crazy because you got the audacity to come into his house after he woke you up this morning, after you, he allowed you to get to the house safely and not say a word. You, you and your ungrateful self. So as we continue on through the text, we already learned the Pharisees wanted Jesus to rebuke the disciples because of the mammoth praise party they were offering to him. And I can imagine when the Pharisees put in their request for Jesus to rebuke his disciples, I'm sure Jesus felt some kind of way. Yeah. I can imagine somebody telling you, don't let your children praise you. Mm. Imagine that. So, and then it's real messed up because Jesus is the king. So how do subjects tell the king what to do? Doesn't that seem like it's out of order? 
And, and I'm in Ephesus because Jesus sometimes would dismiss air pollution or noise pollution. He, he entertained it this time. And Jesus said, I'm just going to show you how I feel about what you're saying by giving you an illustration. In verse 40, Jesus said, I tell you this. If these, referring to the people you want me to shut up, should hold their peace, remaining if they choose not to say a word, then I'll find somebody else to do it. Guess what? I'm not even going to find somebody else. I'll find something else to praise me. For I have enough power to raise up some rocks to cry out my name. See, the reason praise had to be rendered on that day was because this event, the triumphal entry, was not just a little event. For we already learned that day fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah. But also that day marked the beginning of the exodus of Jesus' earthly ministry and the genesis, the beginning of him ultimately being crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Therefore, since it was the end of the earthly role for Jesus, Jesus, like you and me, he was entitled to a farewell celebration. Because I'm looking at a lot of retirees in the building. And if you retired well, I'm sure they had at least some cake for you once you left. <laughs> Do I have a witness, retiree? Now, if you didn't get a cake, you probably wanted to be gone. They wanted you to be gone. They, they, they at least should have gave you a cake or something, or at least a card, all right? Yeah, yeah, if you didn't get a card, we need to pray about your tenure there. Amen. But yet Jesus was entitled to a farewell celebration. He was entitled to be showered with gifts, heal the sick, raise the dead, perform miracles, turn a little boy's lunch into an all-you-can-eat buffet. The least they could do is give him a farewell celebration. After all, he was the honoree. So Jesus deserved to have a day in the limelight because if you read scripture, you will see that there were only really two days where Jesus was celebrated when he was in the manger and on Palm Sunday. Therefore, the crowd had no right to be silent on that day. So therefore, Jesus said, if these choose to listen to what you want me to do, want me to do, then I'll just raise up some rocks to give me the just due that I deserve. Jesus was letting the Pharisees know praise was in order. It was their right to make some noise. And as I get ready to close this thing, I got two things for you. Since we're going to another service, I ain't going to give you the third one. So I got two for you. First, somebody's saying, why should I make some noise? Well, at least some of y'all listening, because y'all would do that. It was really rhetorical, but I'm glad y'all listened. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all who may be going to court deposit and put the chicken on hold. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate it. Amen. Appreciate that. So, so why should noise, you don't have to repeat it this time. Why should noise be made? Well, first, because Jesus was faithful to his fundamental nature. I'm going to say that again. He was, he was faithful to his fundamental nature. What are you saying, Pastor? He remained consistent to his ultimate character while he was on earth. He did not like hate, did not let hate Jealousy, people plotting against him to change who he was. 
Hebrews 13, verse 8, the Hebrew writer says, Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And that's really commendable because some of us recognize in our own lives and also recognize with other people that depending upon the situation dictates how we respond. When everything's good, we're good. When everything's bad, you better get out of my way. I might cuss you out. I might swing on you. Some of y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's why you just said, ouch. So, so sometimes we underestimate how difficult it was for Jesus to remain the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He remained the same even though he knew he was brought to die. Think about it. He had to carry the whole weight of the world upon his shoulders. Did he get weak? Yes, he did. But he almost shamed. Remember in the garden? He said, Lord, let me do the Michael Hass version. Yo, Lord, I don't know about this dying thing. So, so Lord, remove this cup from me. He was tempted to change. But then he checked himself before he wrecked himself. And he remembered his purpose, not my will, but thy will be done. So he always kept his fundamental nature. He always remained the bread of life, the light of the world, the door of the sheep. He always remained the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life. He always remained the way, the truth, and the life. He always remained the light of the world. And somebody ought to make some noise because you know in your life he's remained the same. Is there anyone who could testify all throughout my life he's been a good shepherd? He's led me to some good people. He's guided me to make some wise choices. He's directed me out of some danger. He steered me out of some sticky situations. He escorted me away from some enemies. Then you ought to make some noise. Somebody ought to testify. He's been the resurrection and the life for you. He's resurrected you from death-like situations. He's resurrected you from being dead in sin, dead in thought, dead in feeling, dead in finances, dead in spirit. You ought to make some noise. As the way, the truth, and life. How many of y'all can, can testify? He's shown you what joy looks like. Woo! He's shown you what peace looks like. He's shown you what love really looks like. Yes, he has. And therefore, that's why you ought to make some what? Uh, some of y'all got to make some. Make some noise because he's been faithful. That's why the songwriter said, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Before I hold you any longer, because I'm starting to get hungry while I'm preaching. <laughs> Secondly, and finally, preach this again in three years, I'll give you the third point. <laughs> you should make some noise because he's been faithful to following his word. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Some of y'all missed a shot. Now, now, I can understand why some of y'all didn't clap. Because it's hard to clap about something you don't know about. Just because you come to church does not mean you study his word. So, so it's hard to clap about something that you don't know about. Now, now, if you find yourself in the category, I thank God that you're still living. Because that means God has given you enough time to get acquainted with his word. Can, can I help somebody? And I don't need an offering for this. Your life would have much more peace and joy if you knew more about his word. I, I, I told you about my struggle to church. And many people would have said, I'm going to take off from church today. Some preachers would have said, I'm going to take off from preaching today. But it's his word that's a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And that's why I love how his word connects with songs. Because when I started preaching, I, I remember what James Cleveland told me. Nobody told me. The word never told me every day was going to be sunny. Every day was going to be a bed of roses. Nobody told me what the word did tell me. In this life, you will have trials and tribulations. The word did tell me the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So why are you so surprised when the rain comes your way? Why are you so surprised when death visits your family's address? Who told you you wouldn't have trials? Because the word never told you that. Who told you you would never get sick? Huh, what Bible you been reading? You got that Bible that told you that? You need to discard it expeditiously. Because the word never told you that. But if you understand and read his word, you know that Jesus has always been faithful. Can we make say man, somebody shout faithful? He's been faithful to his word. Jesus was has been faithful to the word that he preached in which we may call in the Baptist church his trial sermon. His first sermon in his hometown of Nazareth. Read it for yourself in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. He went back to the hood. That's where Nazareth was. He, he went to the hood, preached his first sermon. Y'all do remember somebody said, can anything good? Come from Nazareth. So he went to the hood. And he said this in the hood in front of some folk who remembered him when he was little boy Jesus. He came and spoke boldly. Said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me. To heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to present the acceptable year of the Lord. He preached the gospel to the poor. That's why he gave the poor the Beatitudes. He taught the poor the greatest commandment which is to love the Lord with all your heart and all your heart, mind, and soul. He gave the poor understanding that a house divided against itself shall not what? Stand. He healed the brokenhearted. 
Remember when Mary and Martha were crying because they thought Lazarus had died. But when he rose Lazarus from the dead, he healed their broken heart. He proclaimed liberty to the captives. I believe the woman with the issue of blood is in that amen corner. The woman caught in adultery is in that amen corner. The woman at the well is in that amen corner. And that Pharisee named Nicodemus, who you told, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He stayed faithful to following his word. He gave recovery of sight to the blind. There was a man born blind, but he wasn't blind anymore after Jesus touched him. Blind Bartimaeus was blind, but after blind Bartimaeus got his shout on, Jesus came, said, come to me. What do you want me to do? I want to receive my sight. Now blind Bartimaeus is seeing Bartimaeus. Then he preached about setting at liberty those who are oppressed, weighed down. Remember Legion, who was weighed down by a demonic spirit, but he was delivered. Do I have any Bible readers in here? There were some lepers who were weighed down by their leprosy, their skin disease, but they were healed from their leprosy. And as I close, if you've ever been to a rap concert, don't act like some of y'all ain't never been. Some of y'all might not have been because you might be on the other side of age. So I understand. But some of y'all been to a rap concert. Because I, I could probably go on your Facebook page and see them pictures where you try to look like salt and pepper. <laughs> Run DMC with your Adidas jogging suit on. But if you ever been to a rap concert, Many times, the main rapper will have on stage with them what is called a hype man. Some of y'all, Reverend Crespo said, what's a hype man? Yeah. It ain't a hip man, it's a hype man. The, the, the hype man is the one who energizes the crowd. Okay, okay you with me now? All right, cool. He's the one that excites the crowd. And he's usually the one who will say, somebody make some noise. <laughs> How many of y'all remember that? Did I do it good? Let me try it again. Somebody make some noise. I didn't do it well because y'all didn't make me some noise, so let me try it again. Somebody make some noise. Well, well, as I get ready to close on, on today, as we come to worship, I stand in this pulpit as God's hype man. <laughs> to say, somebody make some noise. If he preached to you when you were poor in spirit, poor in finances, poor in attitude, Poor in direction. Somebody make some noise. If he's ever healed your broken heart, make some noise. If he's ever set you free, yeah, make some noise. If he's ever recovered, help you recover your sight, make some noise. If he's been faithful to you, can you make some noise? If he's been your friend, can you make some noise if he's ever forgiven you uh, of your sins? Somebody ought to make some noise if he's ever made a way out of no way for you. Somebody make some noise if he's ever healed your body. Somebody make some noise if he's ever made your enemies your footstool. Uh, you ought to make some noise. Let's reenact Palm Sunday. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, let everything 
Let everything that had breath make some noise. Grab a neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor, he's been too good. He's been too kind for us not to make some noise. So grab your neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor, come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on, shout to the Lord with me. Come on, clap your hands with me. For he's been, he's been too good to keep silent. Somebody raise your hand. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him glory. Open up your mouth and make some noise. Make some noise. Come on, don't get quiet. Make the devil mad. Make. Make. Make some noise. Come on, trouble your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor. When you see me shout, I've got something, I've got something, I wish I had some help here, I've got something, I've got so many things to shout about. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. I had a roof over my head. I had food in the refrigerator. I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. I got to make some noise. Yes, Lord. Come on, don't worry about your neighbor. Make some noise. Let everything let everything. I got to make some noise because he's a healer. I got to make some noise because he's a deliverer. I got to make some noise because he's a provider. He's my all in noise. Oh, make some noise.
we get ready to open the door to Charlotte Church, I'm about to help somebody understand why sometimes you remain in the valley. Because the only time you make some noise is when you want God to do something. time you make some noise is when one of your loved ones or yourself is in the hospital. You make noise when that child or yourself can't get that job. God says sometimes I gotta keep you in the valley so that you know all the H-E double stick hockey sticks you had to go through in order for me to send deliverance your way. So that while you remain in the valley, once you come out, while you're in the valley, you want me to say, God, when you bring me out of this, I will give you glory. Nobody will have to coach me. Nobody will have to pump me. I will bless you at all times. You got to learn how to get, make some noise while the sun is shining. You got to learn how to make some noise because of all that he's done for you. I wish I had somebody who knew God wants you to make some noise. I'll praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad because praise. Making some noise is what I do. Bless his name. Bless his name. As we rise, come on. Bow your heads real quickly. Because I pray you'll start making noise to God in your car. If you don't have a car, make some noise if you got legs to walk. If you got to ride the bus, make some noise because he gave you bus fare. stand make some noise because you can easily be lined up in a hospital bed. So now God we thank you for your son Jesus being faithful to his fundamental nature. We thank you Lord for him being faithful to following his word. And as we've been the recipients of blessings because of, his, because of his word, let us hide his word in our hearts. For we know implicitly he's saying, if you raise up rocks to cry out, he wants his human beings to make some noise. Lord, help us never be guilty of making noise, more noise for some other person, place, or thing. Lord, help us to match or even give greater noise than the noise we will give when we go to a ball game. Help us, oh God, never to go to a concert to give some entertainment more noise for you that never died on the cross for us. So Lord, help us to understand the necessity of making noise. For Lord, we're going to be noisy in heaven as we crown you King of all kings and Lord of all lords. So those of us who plan to make heaven our home, help us to practice making noise down here so that we'll be ready to make some greater noise when we get up there. For the songwriter said, when we all see Jesus, the songwriter said, we'll sing and shout. 
the victory. So now, God, as we pray, there may be somebody who has not given you their heart, has not confessed you as their Savior in the pardon of their sins. We invite them to come right now. There may be somebody who's in need of a church home. And we invite them, if it's by your will, to come to the altar right now and unite with this church. Help us all understand we need not be spiritually homeless. For all of us need a home. All of us need brothers and sisters to pray for us when we can't pray for ourselves. To lift us up when we can't lift ourselves up. So I pray, God, that you may touch somebody's heart and mind as we extend this invitation on to them. This is our prayer, God. As we pray this prayer, in Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Come on, give God praise. Somebody walk, huh? Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Can you do me this favor before we sing? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Answer him, answer him, answer him. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, do you need a church home? Wait for their answer. Come on, come on. Come on, do you need a church home? If you do, I'll walk with you. Tell them, tell them. If you do, you don't have to go up there by yourself. I want to work with you right now. And if your neighbor said yes, but they're not ready to walk, Tell them this, I'll pray for you. Because I don't want you to be spiritually homeless. So if somebody needs to walk, come on and walk. As we open the door to church, come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for Zoe. Hallelujah. Is there another? Oh, hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. Is there another? Come on and pray. Praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap, clap your hands with Come me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and shout before the Lord. Shout before the Lord. Come on, shout before. Shout before the Lord. Come on, shout before the Lord. Shout before the Lord. Come on, shout before the Lord. Shout before the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallel
for the birthday lady working on her birthday, Sister Sharon Johnson. Somebody say happy birthday. She thought I forgot. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear the report coming from our church clerk, Sister Sharon Johnson. Good afternoon, church family. You have before us Angela Johnson looking for a church home. Now here's your shout. We have Zoe Barber for baptism. So let me ask Zoe first. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. Do you believe he died for your sin? Yeah. Do you believe he's coming back? If you, the Lord says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from death, you shall receive. Somebody in Coatesville, I'll give God praise that a child in Coatesville just gave their life to Jesus Christ. Let's give God praise for our sister. She needed a church home. Can y'all make her feel like she made the right choice? Can y'all make her feel like she's welcome? Real quickly, let me get a lady to stand with our sister. Ava, you come on. Amani, y'all like sister. Y'all come stand with your sister. Come on, come on. Okay, come on, come on. Hey, should you get them on something? If you want to come, come on. Come on, give God praise for these ladies. And we want y'all to know y'all got some help. And we give God praise. After the service, we're going to ask you to give a deacon Butch. Where are you, deacon? Chad means we're going to get your names and all of that good stuff that we're looking for. Oh, look at great aunt coming up here. Amen. Amen. Come on, deacons. Come on, trustees. Come on, Rev. Let's shake these hands real quickly. How great is our God. You're the name above all names. You were 
our young ushers, our choir. Give God praise for Sister Crutchfield. Give God praise for our musicians. Can y'all give God praise for our ushers? Give God praise for our trustees, our deacons, Reverend Crutchfield. Give God praise for our communication team. We're going to ask that you bring the palms real quickly. We're going to pray over these palms. Just bring it down Real quickly, let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that through the word, you taught us what these palms are symbolic of. Symbolic of prosperity, increase, advancement, growth. Help us, oh God, to enlarge our understanding of what prosperity is. Prosperity is not just having abundance in finances and houses and land, but prosperity can entail being prosperous in health, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So now, God, we consecrate these palms, not to be something that just collects dust, but something as a reminder that you are a God of increase. You are God that promised to prosper your children and to grant them a better future. So now, God, bless them. Bless them in the homes that they will be housed in. And we pray, oh God, that these palms will be a reminder that you are not through with us yet. So now we ask your blessings as we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Go ask some ushers to come real quickly. Come on, young people. Also, ushers, make sure we have these baskets. If you don't mind, please give an extra offering as we go out of town today and also as we go to Greater Deliverance on Wednesday night. Come on, give these young ushers a hand as they pass out. How great, how great. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Let me bless you real quick. Let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and grant you peace. Is my sincere and fervent prayer. Everybody go with the glory of God in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Have a great day. Get your palm. Give an offering. Be blessed, everybody. Oh, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. How Is our God. Oh, how great. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great. Yes, it is. Great is our God. Just bring down 
for just a second? Those who are going to Port Deposit, we just been informed there's a detour, so we need to get on as quickly as possible. Okay? Listen, can I have everyone's undivided attention, please? If you're going to Port Deposit, at the roundabout, you're going to make a right and go down the street, one street, and you're going to make a left on to Harrisonville Road. Then you're going to go up the road about another half a mile and make another left on Liberty Grove and then make another right and you'll be back on course, okay? I hope y'all got good minds. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, everybody. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, visiting friends.